taking off rusty nuts and bolts. Probably one of the biggest challenges that you're going to have working with machines. So I've put together 16 effective methods that I've used, starting with the easiest all the way to the most brutal. Now before we get started with these techniques, I'm going to go through some of the best tools to use and to not use. The open end wrench, definitely not effective. You will strip out the nut or bolt real easy with this one. When you turn the wrench around, we have the box end. And this is a lot better, but of course you can see that there's 12 points on there and six would be a lot better. Now here on this socket, you can see the six points and this is a lot more effective. Now this ratcheting style wrench, this is definitely the tool you don't want to use because not only does it have 12 points, but it's got that ratchet. And when you put pressure on it, you're gonna snap the ratchet right out of it. Now you wanna use a breaker bar, not a ratchet. Now these deep well sockets, they'll crack right down the side. So what you want to do is you want to use these thick, short, six-point sockets. Okay, well, let's get started. Number one, penetrance. So we've all used WD-40, but it's not actually that effective for penetrating into rusty bolts. But PB Blaster, that is a lot more effective, but actually, what I have found to work really good is automatic transmission fluid, and I've used it straight, but if you mix it 50-50 with acetone, then it really penetrates in really good. Number two, tapping the breaker bar with a hammer. You can use a wrench as well. It's effective. Now this technique is really good in tight quarters, which makes it even more effective. Number three, impact wrenches. These are really, really effective, but their size makes it a very difficult to be able to get into tight areas. Now, an air impact hammer is a lot more compact, but these electric impact hammers, they go anywhere without an air compressor. Number four, the cheater bar. So you just slip it right over the breaker bar and it adjusts to whatever size you have available in your engine compartment. And it is a pretty effective method. Now, if you have the room, this is a five foot breaker bar. And I have taken off numerous bolts with this one. Number five, paraffin into the threads. Now, there's not a lot of heat necessary for this, so you just get the bolt warm enough to be able to allow that paraffin to drive all the way into the threads and it lubricates the thread, so it comes off amazingly effective. You can see the paraffin has driven itself all the way down the threads here. Number six, interlocking two combination wrenches together. I use this all the time, and especially with the little stubbies, it's great. Number seven, using a hammer to knock the rust loose. So make sure the hammer is nice and flat so it doesn't roll off, and give it a good thump. And hopefully, that'll knock the rust free. Number eight, 
We're going to take this bolt and get it really hot this time, and then we're going to douse it with cold water. This aggressive expansion and contracting will break the rust loose. And go ahead and crack it loose. Number nine, vice grips. This used to be my first attempt, but actually the vice grip will actually cause problems because when it compresses, sometimes it'll actually crush the nut onto the bolt, making the problem even worse. Let me show you what happens here. When you take this nut and bolt, you can put it together and there's no problem. But let's go ahead and put it under the vice grip and give it a good squeeze. Now you can see when I put the nut and bolt back together, it actually gets to a point where it's crushed. And you can imagine what would happen if that nut was crushed onto that bolt, compounding the problem. Now, this style of vice grips actually grabs in three points, so it more equally distributes the force. And it's actually pretty effective. Number 10, pipe wrenches. These are really effective if you have the room because when you push on these, the harder you push, the harder they grip. Number 11, you take a hardened steel masonry nail and you tap into it, and there's lots of taps, and then you take, the, take it and you get the angle and keep tapping. Number 12, we're gonna take an angle grinder and we're going to grind a flat spot so we can take a chisel and get a good bite with the chisel and be able to move the bolt that way. Number 13, grinding a rounded bolt down to the next lower size. So you can see this wrench is just a little smaller. So what we're gonna do is we're going to file a flat spot and be able to get the wrench to be able to grab on and give it another shot. Number 14, using a nut splitter. Now actually, this tool does not do a very good job splitting the nut, but through the years, I have found a very interesting application for this so-called nut splitter. So the first thing I do is I wrench it on, and I wrench it on as tight as I can because I'm going to be grabbing on to this nut very securely. Now that I have this securely mounted, we're actually going to use the handle for something to hit and increase the leverage. And now the tool's pretty effective, even though it's not exactly designed this way. Number 15, the chisel. Now it's going to get ugly. Once you have it completely split, then it will just roll off no problem. Number 16, this is my favorite technique. Just don't let the bolts get rusty. So use the anti-seize and while you're doing the work, put this stuff on and when you come back to do the repair, they just come right off. If you have any techniques for getting rusty nuts and bolts off, please leave a comment below. If you like what you see, please 
like, and subscribe.